Huh? No, no, no. No. What was his main problem? He want to enjoy his senses. Yeah, but what was his problem? That was not his problem. That is his desire. His desire is to enjoy senses. That's correct. But what was his problem? Any of our online sages, you have the answer. What are the problem of Puranjana? Someone is speaking, but we cannot hear it. Brinda Priya Mataji, I think you are speaking, but we cannot hear you. Maybe your audio is not connected. Because I cannot see any mic symbol on your... Anyway, I think she is speaking to somebody else. Okay. Yeah. What is his problem? What is Puranjana's problem? What is my problem? My problem is this technology is killing me. Okay. Okay. So Puranjana's problem was he was dissatisfied. That was Puranjana's problem. We discussed this, that Puranjana was dissatisfied. And he was going here and there. Uh, even though he had nice body, he had the ability to enjoy his senses, all these things. But his main problem was he was dissatisfied. And he could not find himself a place of satisfactory residence. Could not find himself a place of satisfactory residence. That was his main problem, which we discussed yesterday. Of course, we discussed so many things. But this is Puranjana's problem. So he came across one lady. And then she was um, living in a city of Bharat Varsha. And there was nice, beautiful description of Bharat Varsha. And then she had this uh, five hooded snake, which was guarding her. She had 10 servants who had many assistants, hundreds of assistants. Uh, and then she was looking very beautiful. And Puranjana wanted to propose to her. That is what Puranjana is going to do today. He is going to successfully propose to his prospective wife. And he wants to enjoy. So that's what he is going to do. He wants to somehow or other enjoy with his wife. Or he wants to take her as his wife and then enjoy with her. So he is going to speak to her in different ways to entice her and then uh, see if she can get some enjoyment out of this lady. So that is uh, uh, his plan. So in order to entice this woman, then naturally, if you want to entice a woman, then you have to speak good things about her. You have to say many nice things about her. And then she say, oh, you're looking so beautiful. So this, so that you're very intelligent. Uh, without you, I cannot do anything. Uh, so many things like that. If a man says to woman, then woman, uh, uh, she believes him. If he, if he tries to say it uh, with some emotion, etc., then she believes him. That's why Prabhupada says that woman should be protected. Because women are very easily carried away by the activities of men. And when, especially when a man is attracted to a woman, and when he very nicely behaves to her, she gets very easily carried away. That's why Prabhupada says women should be protected. Women and children, they require protection. But the modern women, they don't think that they need protection. But that's the reason why society is also very disturbed. Anyway, that's a different topic. So he asked her many questions. Who are you? Where are you coming from? What is your business? Are you married? What are you trying to do? Etc. Uh, so please read, please read. Oh, yeah, okay, read. When it is available, read it quickly. Otherwise, it will go away. I told you. When we were small children, we used to play memory game. Uh, we used to keep so many things on the table, and then you will be given some time to observe, one minute, two minutes to observe. After that, you have to write a big list of what all you saw. 
uh, it is becoming like that memory game you should see that before it vanishes you should know what it is next and you should breathe. anyway some fun life should be a little bit adventurous okay okay what will you do it will come So finally, they understood that the problem is with the laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when once you remove, no, then all the highlight gets disturbed. Then I have to go back and then redo it. It's okay. This all professional hazard of trying to use technology. Where is it? Okay. अभी हीरो बनने के बाद यहां भी आ गया ओके सो प्लीज रीड These are inquiries about Atatattva, self-realization. The conclusion is that unless a living entity is inquisitive about self-realization, he is nothing but an animal. So there are two parallel tracks. Uh, Prabhupada actually uses mm -hmm. two parallel tracks to, to explain things in Puranjana's uh, story. Okay. So uh, there are actually three parallel tracks running. One track is the interaction of man with woman, the man and woman who want to enjoy. So there's one track. The other track is the attraction of the jiva to the material elements, the material world, etc. The third track is Prabhupada brings a track of Krishna consciousness that uh, uh, how to learn Krishna conscious principles from. Uh, uh, Anyway, it's material world. Dukkha Ushadam Tadapi Dukkham. So what said Bhagavatam says. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so the three tracks. Prabhupada also makes a parallel track of Krishna conscious principles. Okay. So here he is asking Puranjana is uh, Puranjana is asking um, what to do with uh, uh, who are you? Where did you come from? Uh, what is your business? All these things. Uh, a man who is interested in enjoying with a woman, uh, he simply at all goes to the woman and asks various questions to her, even though he has no business to talk to her. Uh, so he goes to the woman and then he asks her various questions. Who are you? What is this? When did you come? Where did you come? Etc. Okay. And the woman also is interested in talking to the man. Then she may also reciprocate with him saying that yes yes i am so and so and all these things okay so he wants to know but the actual inquiry should be the inquiry about one's own identity so the question which uh, puranjana asked this lady these questions are supposed to be asked about ourselves that who are we where did we come from what is our business in this material world and where are we going? Uh, these questions are supposed to be asked by ourselves, to ourselves, that what are we doing here? Uh, why are we present here? All these questions. When we ask this question to ourselves, then it becomes self-realization. But when a man is simply asking these questions to a woman, that means this is all prelude for sense gratification. Uh, this is all prelude for sense gratification. Uh, but there's also another line the second parallel, which is what is happening to the jiva. The jiva's mind is simply attracting the intelligence. Uh, what does Krishna say about mind, intelligence, etc. in Bhagavad Gita in third chapter, he gives a certain hierarchy. What is the hierarchy? 
இந்திரியானி பராணி ஆகூர் இந்திரியபிய பரமனக மனசஸ்து பரா புத்தே ஏ புத்தே பரசஸ்து சக ஹூ இஸ் இந்த இந்த டாப் ஆஃப் த ஹையர் ஆர்கி த சோல் பிலோ த சோல் இஸ் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் பிலோ இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் இஸ் மைண்ட் பிலோ மைண்ட் இஸ் சென்சஸ் பிலோ சென்சஸ் இஸ் தி சென்ஸ் ஆப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் பட் இந்த மெட்டீரியல் வேர்ல்ட் ஹவு இஸ் திஸ் ஹையர் ஆர்கி சீன் how do we see this hierarchy in the material world exactly opposite what is considered as goal of life accumulation of sense objects is considered as goal of life why do we accumulate sense objects because we can enjoy with the senses and who is directing this mind and what has happened to the intelligence intelligence has become subservient to that material mind all the power of intelligence is simply used by the mind to fulfill its desire sometime intelligence may object saying that no no i am objecting to this desire of the mind because it can land you into trouble then mind becomes aggressive on the intelligence and then tells the intelligence no no this is how you should enjoy you come and enjoy with me i will show you what is enjoyment uh, all this we can see happening all this we can see happening is interaction this is the interaction between the materialistic mind and the intelligence where the soul is victimized in the end uh, the soul identify himself with the mind and he is thinking i am the mind i am my mind and then he is simply attracting his intelligence which is meant to discriminate between what is right and what is wrong and supposed to advise the mind i mind you should do this or you should not do this that is the function of the intelligence uh, but instead of utilizing the intelligence to discriminate what is right and what is wrong the mind simply uses the intelligence and makes him do all sorts of nonsensical things simply to satisfy the desire of the mind so this is the second track which is going uh, that how mind is captivating the intelligence and making it subservient so this this lady she is considered as the materialistic intelligence which is in rajaguna and tamaguna and it occasionally shows some traces of satguna okay so he is asking about the associates of the the lady uh, okay please read the ten strong servants of the mind are the five working senses and the five knowledge gathering senses the mind and the ten senses combine to become 11 strong bodyguards the mind works under the intelligence and under the mind are the ten senses and under the ten senses are innumerable desires to be fulfilled all these however depend on the vital life force which is here represented by the snake yeah it is represented by the snake so now he is uh, he is is comparing this uh, girl to various people are you uma are you lakshmi uh, are you some demigod where is your lotus have you thrown it away uh, this is a very typical way to entice a girl uh, go and tell her things which she is not which she aspires for uh, oh you are looking like uh, some big heroine in in uh, the movie uh, or something which she aspires for but which she is not go and tell her all these things she will get easily enticed don't learn all these things your brahmachari so be happily brahmachari but this all we have to be careful also because sometimes mind plays games and mind gets attracted to women and then unknowingly you start playing this game with women at least if you know that this is the game then if you see women and if your mind tells please tell her she is looking like uh, what aishwarya rai you run away from mind so you can be very careful that mind is taking you to the path of destruction run away from that so anyway okay please read the purport so okay everyone thinks that his intelligence is perfect uh, sometimes one employs his intelligence in the worship of uma the wife of lord shiva in order to attain a beautiful wife 
when one wants to become learned as brahma he employs his intelligence the worship of goddess of learning saraswati ab idhar chat leke baith jao isko hila tere ho idhar aate rahega one wishes to become opulent as lord vishnu and he worships the goddess of fortune lakshmi in this verse all these enquiries are made by king puranjana ab jo karna karo ha main to idhar se pad raha hu are मेरा भी चौपट कर लिया उपाद्रत या या आपने जब निकाला ना इधर पूरा चौपट हो गया ये भागवत में लिखा है उपाद्रत कोई भी काम करने में बहुत दिक्कत आता है कलयुग में ऐसा इसलिए नहीं कर सकता है स्पेशली भागवत पढ़ने में बहुत मुश्किल होता है ओके एवरी टाइम दिस ऑल्सो इज क्रेजी इट टेक्स एस टू दार्टिंग पॉइंट इन दिस वर्स ऑल दिस एनक्वायरीज आर मेड बाई किंग पुरंजना द लिविंग एंटिटी हु इज बिविल्ड एंड डज नॉट नो हाउ टू एम्प्लॉय हिज इंटेलिजेंस the living entity is bewildered it does not know how to employ his intelligence uh, instead of using his intelligence to actually discern the difference between matter and spirit and understand the nature of matter and understand the nature of spirit this is why intelligence is there there is only one function of intelligence what is the intelligence supposed to do it is supposed to discern matter from spirit hmm? by the knowledge of scripture we should use intelligence to discern matter from spirit and then understand we are not matter we are spirit and act accordingly in the position of being a spirit soul this is what we are supposed to do using our intelligence but because intelligence is misdirected misdirected intelligence because it is misdirected then it run behind woman or it run behind sense gratification woman is the grossest manifestation of the expansion of sense gratification and this is called stree stree means the the facility to expand sense gratification um material world cannot be enjoyed by any living entity even if one desires to enjoy it he immediately becomes demon like ravana hiranyakashipu or kamsa uh, the satisfaction of one senses and desires mean enjoying maya not the goddess of fortune uh, so therefore um he is trying to put various questions to this lady um in the beginning of bhagavatam this discussed in the second canto in the very beginning this discussed hmm? the very nature of this material world is question and answer everybody is asking question everybody is giving answer prabhupad makes a big list of who is asking question and who is giving answer in second canto in the beginning uh, uh, in the second canto shota vyadini rajendra ninam santi sahasra saha apashyatam asmatatvam griheshu फेक्ट answer huh? so because the material intelligence is misdirected so then he is simply asking unnecessary questions and he wants to become like hiranyakashipu hmm? then um, then he is saying that okay i have understood that you are not some demigodess because your feet are touching the ground so you are not some demigodess you are some normal woman but if you marry me we can enjoy like lakshmi and narayana this is the idea of the living entity that he can enjoy like radha and krishna or he can enjoy like lakshmi and narayana that he can become god and he can enjoy this is his idea so he is saying like that he is saying like that so the 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 mind it shows various type of um, 
um, it, it enticement to the intelligence. You see, this type of enjoyment is available. You see, that type of enjoyment is available. Why are you simply wearing saffron cloth and wasting your time? Uh, you see these grahastas, how they are enjoying life. Uh, they're having one wife and she can cook everything what he wants. What you can get? Every day, same menu. Why you are suffering like this? Uh, you go and get married, you get one wife. Every day you can sit and order. Morning wife will come and ask you, what is for breakfast? Afternoon she will ask you, what I should make for lunch? Evening she will ask you, what I should make for dinner? Hmm? Illusion. This is called illusion. My wife sometimes asks me, what can I make for breakfast? Then I tell her, why don't you make dosa? She says, no, I cannot make it. Hmm? I said, why? I don't have batter. I don't have batter to make dosa. Then I ask her, why do you ask me? Whatever you have, you make. No, no, I want to make what you want. So I'm asking you. So, okay, I want dosa. Why can't you tell something which I cannot make, which I can make? Why are you always telling which I cannot make? Now you have big fight. Huh? This is called illusion. It's called illusion. It's called illusion. So, there is a desire to enjoy, but you cannot enjoy. You cannot enjoy. Huh? Okay. Please read. To desire to enjoy this material world as a subordinate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is godly. The demons, however, want to enjoy this material world without considering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the difference between a demon and a Demigod. Since every woman in this world wants her husband to be very influential, rich and powerful, Puranjana to seduce the girl introduced himself as such personality. In the material world, whether one be a man or woman, one wants to enjoy. Every living entity who possesses such material desires is called Purusa and enjoyer. Superficially, it appears that the woman is enjoyed and the man is the enjoyer, but internally, everyone is an enjoyer. Consequently, everything in this material world is called Maya. Yeah. So, being man, being woman is all superficial. Ultimately, everyone is, they want to be enjoyer. Uh, they want to be Purusha. Everybody has Purusha Bhava. Uh, whether man or woman, doesn't matter. Everybody only has Purusha Bhava. Everybody is thinking that I should become God and I should enjoy. Uh, nominally, they take the position of a man and nominally take the position of a woman. So, therefore, these things in one sense, should not be given so much importance. Like sometimes we are going to have some statements about the nature of women, etc. Uh, this this um, uh, this section has some statements about the nature of women, which act, which actually some of some matajis are there. Sometimes it might disturb them. Uh, but we should understand that these are all very ephemeral and very superficial. Whether man or woman, uh, the nature which is assumed by man and the nature which is assumed by woman are very ephemeral and superficial. Ultimately, in the material world, the end game is that everybody is Purusha or everybody want to be Purusha. Uh, so the position of man and woman is, is very, very ephemeral. Today we can be man, tomorrow we can become woman. That's what this whole pastime is going to show us. Uh, so there is no big deal of a man trying to aspire to be a woman or there is no big deal of woman aspiring to become man. It's all very important in Kali Yuga, we should know because both things are going on. One side, women are fighting to become man. Uh, they want to become equal to man. But someone tells them that you are not equal to man. Who told them? We don't know. But someone has told them that you are not equal to man. So they have got this idea of artificial inequality. So they are trying to fight. And no, we want to become same as man. But there is also other part of the story. What is that? Some men are trying to become women. That's also other part of the story. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are many men who have born in man's body, but suddenly they have found out that they have the consciousness of a woman. And now they want to become woman. So man is trying to become woman. Woman is trying to become man. In the end, Kali Yuga, everybody is messed up and confused. So man is attracted to man. Woman is attracted to woman. Everything is becoming demoniac in Kali Yuga. 
is very fast. We are, we are uh, very quickly advancing towards hell. So why this confusion? Because everybody is Purusha. Everybody is Purusha. Everybody is Purusha. So that's what Prabhupada points out. So therefore, if you remove the principles of Varnashrama, then what will be left is demoniac life. What will be left is demoniac life. That's what is happening in Kali Yuga. That the principles of Varnashrama is removed. What is left is simply the tendency to enjoy. And when you just leave this tendency to enjoy without restriction, without any restriction, uh, there's a phrase, uh, even in ISKCON, we use this phrase, psychophysical nature, right? Uh, we use this phrase, no? That uh, what is one psychophysical nature? Psychophysical nature is Varnashram. So if you remove the Varnashram, because when you say Varnashram, it comes with restriction. You can do this, you cannot do this. If you simply look at what is one's psychology and what is one's physical nature, then what is left is only enjoying mentality. And when simply enjoying mentality is left without restriction, then the whole society will become demonia. That's called Maya. So, hmm. Please read. When, when one is agitated by lusty desires, his senses are attracted by all kinds of vishaya, enjoyable things like sound, touch, form, smell, and taste. Yeah. So then, then the mind simply gets covered by lust. So whatever one sees, one simply sees as how to enjoy, how I can use this for enjoyment. Mind becomes covered by lust. We have studied this. This is an elaborate ad analysis of this we have done in Bhagavad Gita uh, in the third chapter. Such a species is typical of a living entity attracted by the opposite sex. This is called bewilderment occasioned by becoming conditioned by material nature. When a man or a woman is attracted by the opposite sex, it does not matter whether the opposite sex is beautiful or not. The lover sees everything beautiful in the face of the beloved and does become attracted. Yeah, that is the nature of lust. Huh? The nature of lust is that the moment you get attracted, then everything looks very conducive for enjoyment. Huh? That's why in this material world, there's no one definition for beauty. There's no one definition for beauty. Each country has its own definition of beauty. Each culture has its own definition of beauty. In some cultures, women of certain bodily construction are considered very beautiful. Uh, but the same thing is not considered beautiful in some other culture. Uh, in some other culture, something else is considered beautiful. Same thing about man. In some cultures, a man of certain, certain bodily construction is considered very handsome. But that is same thing is not in some other culture. Because why it is because? Because simply the mentality is to enjoy. And whatever is available looks very beautiful. Whatever is commonly available, it looks very beautiful. Uh, so that is the very nature of lust. So therefore they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. But uh, so Purunjana, yeah, please read. Purunjana admits herein that he is attracted by avidya. Now he wishes to see the complete feature of avidya and so requests the girl to raise her head so that he can see her face to face. He does wishes to see the various features that make avidya attractive. Yeah, so, so he, he on his own, the living entity, he falls for ignorance. And then when he falls for ignorance, then he becomes attracted by the various features of the manifestation of the ignorance in terms of bodily beauty, in terms of various paraphernalia for enjoyment, uh, in terms of children, in terms of relatives, in terms of uh, facilities like car, like a motorcycle, car, that, this. They're all simply expanded features of avidya. And then he becomes very attracted to it. 
uh, he he plans his life in such a way that he can acquire these things very nicely and then he can enjoy he wants to build a house uh, he wants to do so many things okay narada by this incident can you read by this incident yeah we can understand that when a man is aggressive and begins to a woman the woman becomes attracted to the man uh, the woman becomes very attracted to the man when the man becomes very interested in the woman okay the living entity is ignorant of his origin he does not know why this material world was created why others are working in this material world and what the ultimate source of this manifestation is no one knows the answers to these questions and this is called ignorance generally people are of the opinion that we are all here accidentally and that as soon as these bodies are finished all our dramatic activities will be finished and we will become zero she cannot tell puranjan her father's name because she does not know from where she has come nor does she know why she is present in that place she frankly says that she does not know anything about all this this is called the position of living entity in the material world in this material world we are all we have many nice facilities for living but we are also so foolish that we do not ask who has made this world habitable for us and has arranged it so nicely everything is functioning in order but people foolishly think that they are produced by chance in this material world and that after death they will become zero they think that this beautiful place of habitation will automatically remain yeah this is how our scientists also think uh, they have this theory big bang huh? so they think that one big bang happened and then everything came that is their idea and they don't know that why we are here now they are doing big research to find uh, some other planets where we can go and live so is going on is going on uh, okay please read this this lack of krishna consciousness is called ignorance in our ignorance we may create nationalism philanthropy internationalism science philosophy and so many other things the basic principle behind all this is these is ignorance what then is the value of all this advancement of knowledge if the basic principle is ignorance yeah so that is a question prabha is asking is a very relevant question sometimes modern is gone we also see that nationalism is becoming very prominent uh, people are um, sometimes devotees are identifying themselves with uh, nationalism hinduism and more and more uh, prabha said these principles are based on ignorance uh, they are not they are, we are not uh, we are careful about these influences within our movement because our movement is meant to bring everybody to krishna consciousness that our movement is not uh, is not a nationalistic movement uh, we are not a hindu movement we are not meant to be all these things prabha actually formed this international society of krishna consciousness by preaching to people who are not by faith hindus that's how this whole society was formed uh, but now what is happening is more and more gravitating towards uh, hindus they are doing something nothing to do so it's all more and more gravitating towards hindus we don't see uh, any big preaching attempt to preach to non hindus even in india we don't see that they are not so much preaching to muslims Uh, we are not preaching to christians we are not preaching to everyone without discrimination we are targeting or our preaching is targeting to mostly to uh, hindu population which is a very dangerous thing iskon is not meant to be like this iskon is meant to preach krishna consciousness to everybody without discrimination and that's what we are meant to do uh, we are not meant to just uh, make uh, demigod worshippers to krishna worshippers of course we should do that also 
It's not that we should ignore them, but we should not restrict ourselves to them. That's very important. So that's something which we should seriously think about. How to make preaching strategy to preach to everyone, which is the basic principle of Sankirtan movement, that um, everybody should uh, become participants of the Sankirtan movement, not only Hindus. So we should not become Hindu temples or Hindu centers. If we do that, then we are operating on the basic principle of ignorance. Okay, uh, please read. Siva, Siva, obviously, without good knowledge of the surrounding and understanding, the vital force are the business away. We then get the body and the senses become pretty and do not work. The vital force always exists within the soul, and when the soul is awakened from so called sleep, we can see this elemental strength or the active senses and the mind with their various desires. In any our sleeping hours, we cannot understand. We can understand. We can understand by virtue of our feeling process that the snake lives by eating the air that passes within the body, within this body. Even then, the raw body is a vital force remains active and alive to protect the body. Thus, the snake is described as living and eating air to keep the body fit for life. Yeah, so most of us don't know what is happening with our body. Uh, we don't know how our body works, how do we digest food, uh, how do we eat food, how do we excrete. Uh, we don't know all these things. It's all happening. Most of us don't know. And uh, when something goes wrong, we also don't know what is going wrong. Uh, so that is what is explained here. That um, this lady said, I don't know all these people, they're all with me. I don't know how they came. They're all simply here with me and they're doing their different functions. So, yeah, please read. The living entity comes down into this mental world, person's reputation, and in intelligence, representation by the woman, gives him the power, the proper direction by which he can satisfy his senses to their own distance. In actuality, however, intelligence comes from these world to person, or the three perspectives of life, and he gives good perspectives to the living entity. Who has come down to this world? In Puranda, the ordinary living entity and the woman represents the ordinary living entity's intelligence. Combined, the living entity enjoys its mental senses and the intelligence supplies all that for its enjoyment. Thus, the living entity under the bodily conception of life utilizes his intelligence to his best capacity. Yeah, so this is the second parallel line which Prabhupada explained. Uh, that uh, he is simply uh, utilizing his intelligence. The living entity is simply utilizing his intelligence to enjoy in various ways. The intelligence is directing the senses. You can enjoy like this, you can enjoy like that. Uh, it is giving multiple direction to the senses. And the living entity is also enjoying. He is he's enjoying. So that's why this lady is saying, My dear Lord, I have just arranged the city of nine gates for you so that you can have all kinds of sense gratification. You may live here for 100 years and everything for your sense gratification will be supplied. So, this is how the living entity gets cheated. He gets cheated. Okay. The lower grades of life in the blood and tree life, there is no system of sexual intercourse. The upper grades in the life of God and peace, there is sex. But the insects and animals do not talk of actual adversity. You have not talk of life, however, there is full knowledge of how to adjust this. In other words, human being is very much happy in life. 
Indeed, all the unique things are meant to be implied. They prefer Grantha life because there is a conversation process. The current thing, the other status of life are more than the animal life. For animals also have sex, whereas the brahmachari wants a senior to completely go to sex. Kirby therefore a whole of these orders of physical life. Yeah. So if you see Varnashram, uh, all the three fourth of the ashram is arranged in such a way that there is no sex life. Only one fourth of the ashram is arranged in such a way that there is allowance for sex life. Even that is restricted sex life, not unrestricted sex life. So, Varnashram has this natural restriction. That's why in Dali, there nobody wants Varnashram. Nobody wants Varnashram because they can simply enjoy the way they want. So, the woman is telling that, uh, let us enjoy. Uh, Prabhupada discusses Pravritti Marga and Nivritti Marga. Uh, in this purport, he says that uh, uh, people are uh, more interested in Pravati Marga. They are not interested in Nivriti Marga. So, because Pravati Marga means that you can enjoy. Uh, Nivriti Marga means that uh, uh, you cannot enjoy. You have to renounce. Okay. Please read from here. Although Brahastra desires... Also, the Grantha desires and gratification for the very instruction. The gravity, however, who is interested in only self gratification does not for any way to discuss. And Rasta enjoys his life in this life as well as the next. The gravity does not know what the next life is about because it is simply interested in the in this life. But the world, if the world is too much inclined towards sex, it does not care for the transcendence of the life. Yeah, so one should be very careful. One should be very careful. So therefore, finally, she uh, she accepts his proposal. She says, oh, my dear hero, who in this world will not accept a husband like you? You are so famous, so magnanimous, so beautiful, and so easily got uh, So she says, OK, I will get married to you. I'll get married to you. Because the husband provides uh, a certain, uh, OK, let's read this part. OK, please read the highlighted question. So the husband is certainly a great devotee to his wife. The husband is considered very magnanimous because he gives as as many children to the wife as she likes. Every woman is fond of children. Therefore, any husband who can please his wife by sex and give her children is considered very magnanimous. Manu Sahib Samhita recommends that to keep a wife satisfied, a husband should give her some ornaments because women are the very fond of home, ornaments, dresses, children, etc. In this way, the woman is the center of all materialism. A man is always famous for his aggression toward a beautiful woman, and such aggression is sometimes considered fair. Although rape is not legally allowed, it is a fact that a woman likes a man who is very expert at it. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if this light is still there in the new edition of Bhagavatam or whether they removed it, but uh, it is there. Prabhupada wrote it. So, therefore, we should understand it carefully. We should not think that the Prabhupada is promoting rape culture or uh, Prabhupada is. Uh, thinking that rapists are great, are probably degrading women, etc. This is one of the um, one of the toughest parts of this section. Um, there has been a lot of debate in, uh, within ISKCON about this particular line and the usage of the word rape. Um, there has been some clarification which has also been given, written clarification which even Jayavet Maharaj wrote one uh, short uh, essay about this, and then uh, also one more Prabhupada disciple woman, she responded to this. Uh, basically, what Prabhupada is trying to say uh, here is that uh, women likes uh, a man to aggressively court for her. Uh, Prabhupada is not uh, uh, talking about the Kaliuga rapist uh, who are trying to uh, violently enjoy women uh, and uh, trying to violate them. Papa is not talking about such people. 
Uh, Prabhupada is simply talking about, so the context has to be seen. Uh, the context is uh, that the Puranjana, uh, he is uh, trying aggressively to woo this lady uh, and he is trying to have some relationship with her. Uh, so, in this context, Prabhupada uses this word. Um, let's, um, let's go to Jayadraj Maharaj. Uh, right. Go back to get it. Okay, can you see it? It's too small. Too small. Okay, I will read it. Commenting on a verse of Srimad Bhagavatam 4.25.41, in which a young woman accepts sexual advances of a king, Sila Prabhupada says a man is always famous for his aggression towards a beautiful woman. Such aggression is sometimes considered rape. Although rape is legally not allowed, it is a fact that a woman likes a man who is very expert in rape. Understandably, this comment has raised questions. What is Srila Prabhupada saying? In 1999, a woman in the Hare Krishna community wrote uh, me about this, and uh, here is the reply I gave. This is from Jayadev Maharaj's uh, personal website. Thank you for your letter regarding Srila Prabhupada's comment about rape in the purport to 4.25.41. You have asked for some further explanation. Clearly, Srila Prabhupada does not intend to say that what the woman really wants is, for example, to be mugged and violated in the Central Park. It's in USA. Uh, and the mug is typical American slang for uh, attacking with a weapon. So that's mugging, American slang. Attacking with a weapon to make a person. Uh, uh, unconscious or uh, a person helpless, it's called mugging. In essence, the male wants to conquer and the female wants to be conquered. A woman does not want to be sheepishly asked uh, her hand by a bashful, weak need, mill what tossed. Um, very interesting use of word. She wants to be pursued and want to be fought over by strong, eager suitors. To be swept off her feet. In that sense, a man is attractive to a woman when he is bold, strong, valorous, assertive, aggressive, manly, and so on. Hollywood knows this. So we have box office stars like Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or however he spells his name at all. I lived when I lived in San Diego, I used to frequent to a used bookshop, which Apart from the books I was looking for, I had rows and rows of what book trade called romances, novels for whom the intended readers are obviously women. These books are not high literature. They are formuloid, but they sell like mad. Even from the cover, the formula is obvious. Whatever details of the storyline, the woman is one, conquered, overpowered, possessed by strong, powerful man. I don't mean to say that women have no taste for higher literature. My point is simply that Hollywood and book trade are tapping to the primal psychological vein, physiological vein, uh, where uh, the blood, you can bet millions on it, is sure to be flowing. It's an English language. It means that where money is, they are uh, going there. The film producers and book publishers know the heart of their audience. Of course, rape carries its image of guns, bruises, brutal thugs, hardly what a, any woman can hope for. But the essential feature, a man who is strong and aggressive is sexually attractive. The ultimate attractive male is, of course, is Krishna himself. He carried off Rukmini Devi, snatching her like a lion from the clutches of the jackal, Shishupala. Krishna married Sadhya, after defeating seven bulls, Krishna married Lakshmana by carrying her off at her Swayamvara ceremony. In the same way that Garuda snatches the jar of nectar from the hands of demigods. And Krishna married 16,000 other wives after rescuing them from the demon Bhaumasura. 
rapists and romantic heroes of the material world are nothing but perverted reflections of Krishna. Krishna is the real object of love of all living entities. As long as we continue in material consciousness, identify ourselves with material bodies as male and female, forgetting Krishna, we have to continue forever as cheaters and cheated. Uh, and the cheaters, rapists, and the rape <laughs> in this miserable world. And therefore, our real business is to develop our dormant love for Krishna. I hope this answers your question. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, there is also a follow-up comment which is uh, given by Mataji. Uh, Tulsi Priya Mataji. Uh, she wrote a follow-up comment. Thank you for putting that, posting that essay. In settling this issue for myself, I had years ago undertaken some research on the word rape and its origin, intending to write an essay on it. As usual, I let myself distracted by other things. And now I have read this. Uh, I, may make, I may take it up again. I thought it might interest you and others to know what I discovered. The etymology of the word rape is exactly as you have expressed in your essay, to seize, abduct, carry off by force. The word rapid is derived from the same Anglo-French Latin roots, rapper, where free. Uh, from the online etymology dictionary, rape, seize, prey, and take by force. From Anglo-French, rapper, or, 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 or. to seize, to object, a legal term, uh, Cease, carry off by force, abduct. Uh, Rapri was used for sexual violation, but now only very rarely. The usual word being supram, uh, literally disgrace. Sense of sexual violation or ravishing of a woman. Uh, first recorded in English as a noun in 1481. Uh, the noun sense of taking anything, including a woman, away by force. The verb in this sense is from 1577. Rapist is from 1883. So this is all etymological research of the word. How the word, because what happens is that in the language, a particular usage of a word keeps changing. Uh, sometimes a word is used in a particular context in a certain time, and then over time, the same word gets used in a particular other context. So people who see this word or usage of this word in a different context, they actually completely mistake the meaning of the word. So that's what is happening here. So now she concludes. Also, simple common sense would imply that if a man likes a woman who is expert at rape, uh, your average thug in the central park or some dark alley is not what is being referred to. Expertise is obviously not required to commit rape in that sense. Once I tried to explain this to a certain devotee of feminist pet, and she just gave me a doubtful look as if I was juggling words and trying to justify the indefensible. Although the purport may have used to justify exploitation and sexual abuse of women, the abuse was due to misunderstanding of Srila Prabhupada's words, not the words themselves. There are online versions of a couple of old dictionaries offering archaic definition of words. I have used it more than once to clarify something Srila Prabhupada said that did not immediately make sense to me. Since the definitions in these dictionaries were likely to have been used at the time Srila Prabhupada was in his student phase of life, it seems more reasonable to assume that they would shed light on terms he used and what may have been out of vogue or changed by the time when he came to America. These dictionaries can be found by entering the word uh, to a defined but to be defined on this website, she gives a website address. The site is a portal to numerous and varied dictionaries. It has Webster's 1828 dictionary and Webster's 1930 revised and unabridged. These dictionaries have been posted by Christian groups who feel that language have degraded over time and co-opted by secular interests. I even found the word furutive there. So this is basically the explanation which Jayadev Maharaj gives. Uh, he is a BBT editor. Uh, so, the use of this word is not in derogatory sense. That's the whole point. Uh, the use of this word is in the sense that uh, this word is being used um, to indicate that women like men to aggressively woo them. That's what it, uh, it ultimately means. It doesn't mean that... Um, 
uh, women like uh, all these uh, lusty, violent uh, people who are uh, raping and killing women on the streets. It is not meant to convey that meaning. And uh, anyone who knows Prabhupada or who has uh, studied Prabhupada, then uh, they can also understand that there should be a different meaning to this particular word. Okay, any specific questions on this topic? Online, because Mataji are sitting online, they are not here. You have any question or comment you want to make on this topic? Most welcome. Mataji's Prabhus, anybody? Uh, this also opens up uh, more topics for discussion, but uh, I would refrain from getting into these topics. They are more of uh, uh, academic nature in the sense of uh, what should be done to edit Srila Prabhupada's books, uh, whether editing is, uh, is an option uh, or should we write commentaries to commentaries, is that an option or should we add footnotes, uh, is that an option. So a lot of discussion has taken place uh, at different levels uh, about this topic, uh, but I would refrain from going into detail about this. Things. Anyway, Bhakti Vaibhav Prabhu, you want to speak something about this? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, am I audible? Yes, please go on. Prabhuji, like... I think you should just speak and you will be heard. This is our uh, hope. Uh, but Prabhuji, things can uh, go hope against hope. ओ हरे कृष्ण नॉट यू बक्ति को हरे राम हरे राम 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 ऑफ कोर्स वी कैन हियर यू जस्ट स्पीकिंग हियर हरे कृष्ण क्या हो गया हरे कृष्ण वी आर एबल टू हियर एंड यू यू नो व्हाट इज द बेस्ट थिंग टू डू इज टू ब्लेम द अदर पर्सन बक्ति को प्रभु आपका तरफ से इशू है सब प्रॉब्लम आता है अरे आप आपका ऑडियो कनेक्ट नहीं किया इसकी वजह से हम आपका दिव्य मधुर वाणी सुन नहीं सकते हैं आई थिंक ऑनलाइन न्यूज आर एबल टू हियर मी राइट ऑनलाइन न्यूज आर एबल टू हियर मी क्लियरली यस यस वी आर एबल टू हियर Okay, I think eventually they will figure out how to do it. Right on track. Okay, up. Yeah. If it's a small thing, you can add it in the chat. Yes, sir. Right on track. What happened? Came? 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 Now your mind is free. Talk. Hari Bol. Do you want to listen? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. We can hear you. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Talking about the psychophysical nature, sir. Right. I was so, talking about Varnashram. Yeah, psychophysical means Varnashram, right? Yeah, I mean Varnashram is a defined and a very civilized version of exhibiting psychophysical nature. Okay, uh, so but like both are uh, like same thing basically. No, no, both are not same. That was what I was telling. Both are not same. When you say Varnashram, that means. immediately rules and regulations come into play like brahmachari means you cannot think about woman mm. okay the moment you say brahmachari then it expressly means that you cannot think about woman okay yeah yes but if you say psychophysical nature of a man is to remain unmarried it does not restrict you from not thinking about woman not audible Your volume is very low. That is not my fault. 
some other person is to be blamed for it <laughs> okay my point is when you say that i have taken can you hear me now yes yes it's low volume but okay i am i like this okay so when when a person says that i have accepted brahmachari ashram okay yeah. then expressly it means that he cannot think about women yes correct yes but if a person says that my psychophysical nature is that i don't want to get married mm. then it does not expressly stop him from thinking about women yeah he can think about women he can go to a prostitute he can uh, try to uh, go to a married woman and make her life miserable except yeah. not getting married he can do everything else yes so he can be a number one womanizer and just not get married yeah because his psychophysical nature is that he doesn't want to get married you understand yes yes the difference between psychophysical nature and varnashram yeah so in bhagavad gita prabhupad also uses this term at one place psychophysical yeah but using psychophysical nature one time and using varnashram million times yeah you have to understand that uh, yes 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 bro yeah it's clear from your uh, this my basic question was uh, the question is that he, but uh, varnashram right. allows for psychophysical nature that is correct okay. yeah so but psychophysical nature is not a full definition of varnashram yeah okay but varnashram allows for proper exhibition of psychophysical nature with rules and regulations yes. that is correct okay so the word psychophysical nature itself is not useless yeah it's not useless word but stand alone it is very dangerous you yeah, can substitute you can substitute psychophysical nature with varnashram i mean sorry reverse you can't substitute varnashram with psychophysical nature you understand now that is my point yeah yeah i understood your point sorry so but my question is uh, basically uh, uh, that generally uh, how to understand one like psychophysical nature or varna varna and ashrama so that is always a question uh, which is a uh, discuss and uh, like people talk about uh, guna and karma but then the guna and karma keeps changing right so because the guna some and someone is in the mode of goodness passion events within one day one is in different mode and karma also it changes sometimes one may be a manager some and later one later he may be doing preaching work or a brahmanical work so how how to decide what is one type of like varna or ashrama yeah so the, the that's why our acharyas have mainly given daivi varna ashram see what is the point if you go little deeper sometimes you know we can make a decent presentation but we can make a deeper presentation uh, mm-hmm. if you go little deeper what is the problem of uh, kaliyuga in kaliyuga everybody is varna shankara this is the problem of kaliyuga okay yeah. this is the basic problem of kaliyuga uh, yeah. in kaliyuga children are begotten as a by product of lust yes yeah. okay that means it is varna shankara mm. the moment you have varna shankara then definitely there is confusion about varna and ashram okay this is where our basic confusion of varna and ashram comes without uh, uh, without uh, trying to i mean trying to be as decent as possible okay mm. so this is where our our basic problem comes that's why prabhupad keeps on saying garbhadan samskar garbhadan samskar garbhadan samskar so many places because if we don't follow certain rules and regulations while begetting children then the children who are born will be confused and they will confuse the whole society itself that's what yeah. is happening now yeah that is the basic problem okay so yeah. having said that the moment you go through certain training then mm. a certain features of one's guna and karma does become prominent it, it is not that it doesn't become prominent it does become prominent okay so naturally people gravitate towards a certain things uh, like a uh, um like i can see many brahmacharis sitting in front of me okay and many of them are are quite also advanced in, in their age means that 
they have lived brahmachari life for quite some time so they are yeah. able to live brahmachari life and they have accepted it as their way of life because they have some natural inclination towards it but in kaliyuga always temptation is there so simply yeah. you have to you have you should have the ability to overcome that temptation uh, yeah. that yetan uh, vegan yo vishaheta dhiraha vishaheta dhiraha one should simply tolerate it okay if you are able to have that ability to tolerate it then the temptation itself it will go away over a period of time and the appearance of the temptation is not a problem it's not considered a such a big problem oh uh, he boy oh, i got like tempted by seeing some woman now what to do are theek hai if you are able to tolerate it then just go on that's it uh, so that's the whole point okay but if it becomes miserable you cannot tolerate it then you become grahastha okay and then another kind of misery will attack so the whole point is that some once there is some little bit of training then you will gravitate towards grahastha life or brahmachari life or anything like that okay. like sometimes early impressions are are also very very important uh, like uh, i'm just telling that i used to joke with my son from the time he is born i used to joke with my son 10000 reasons to remain brahmachari i always used to tell him that uh, you when you are even like 6 years old also i used to make fun of him i'll tell you i'll make you brahmachari uh, and i'll tell him i'll give 10000 reasons reason why you should remain brahmachari so whenever i tell him 10000 reasons to become brahmachari after some time when he was like 8 9 years old he always used to tell me no no i will get married you are very clear that he wants to get married and he got married also i am not saying no, getting married is wrong or right but i am just saying that when you train someone then the traits become naturally clear Uh, that's the that's the whole point when you give them some proper training then the traits become clear that whether he wants to remain brahmachari or he want to become grahastha what you want to do so that is the process of trying to uh, find uh, what is your inclination or uh, how to engage yourself um ashramas are little easier because uh, they are little bit more defined varnas are little bit more confusing because uh, you know we are so much mixed up about our varnas but also that also over period of time it becomes more and more clear uh, you can see some of them are naturally interested in management uh, more interested in management some of them are naturally more interested in doing some service some of them are naturally more interested in uh, business related activities like book distribution running some uh, making some money for temple collecting money from different people so each of them have their expertise and then even though we kind of do everything but there also we gravitate towards a certain service like it's not like uh, everyone equally does everything some of them are are rarely gifted they do everything everyone does everything some of them but others generally they tend to gravitate towards uh, what what they like given a given a choice i would like to not involve so much in management uh, given a choice but uh, there's also some duty they say that okay you do this you do that i also do it but if you ask me if if i am given a choice i would not like so much i am not saying management is is not good or something like that those who manage they are glorious because to manage a spiritual organization is not so easy uh you have to manage by inspiration so unless you are an inspirational leader is very difficult to manage uh, you cannot long term sustain so those who manage those who take up that service the challenge they are glorious but we can see that i have seen I, i have spoken to many devotees they they always say that oh management is not uh, my cup of tea i can't do it they say i can't do it so naturally they are moving away from uh, from uh, kshatriya function some of them are inclined towards deity worship uh, some of them are inclined towards uh, uh, studying and teaching scripture or preaching uh, so different people get inclined in different ways so over time these things can be clarified it's not uh, is not is not obvious but at the same time is not very difficult also it's not very difficult also but some of them have mixed interest that's also fine because it's possible that's why devi varnashram gives that uh, kind of flexibility where you can operate over a broad range of activities and make sense yes yes sir thank you Okay. Any other question? Yep. 
to ji when puranjan is trying to attract this woman seduce the woman so that what does it relate to in terms of the soul and the intelligence means i could understand that what you shared about their intelligence being utilized for something that the mind is asking for actually yes yeah. but what is that seducing like because in in my like when we just talk about the hierarchy in terms of intelligence mind so what i understand that the intelligence has fallen weak and thus it is becoming overpowered by the mind's dictate correct yeah but there is no nothing like seducing to the oh mind is expert seducer so can you please help me help me understand yeah so uh mind actually uses the process of thinking feeling and willing and then it seduces the intelligence okay intelligence may not be willing to do something okay by intelligence you may not be willing to do something okay but the mind wants you to do it like for example i'll give a simple example okay there's gulab jamun and you want to take it away okay and you know it is very tasty gulab jamun you want to take it away okay if the mind is hell bent on taking away the gulab jamun it will very nicely seduce the intelligence it will tell this is prashadam uh, there is no harm in stealing prashadam prabhupa said that you can eat prashadam and you can go to goloka everything which is favorable for doing that activity mind will start projecting and it is very commonly i have seen in devotees that uh, how they utilize their mind to actually do things which they are not supposed to do and give a perfect krishna conscious excuse for it also okay why because mind has expertly seduced them mind puts all arguments which is favorable to fulfilling the mind's desire in such a way that it convinces the intelligence that you are doing something very krishna conscious it convinces the intelligence so is is uh, pruji this is good pruji what i understand on this na like this is the intelligence which has already been seduced by the mind because the intelligence gives the proposals how like no no the no, mind gives the proposal like, intelligence doesn't give the proposal no, no, intelligence plans how to give the facilities for see mind gives the proposal intelligence plans the way to make the proposal to happen yeah so now as a krishna uh, as a devotee he needs some license to do something which is not appropriate so he, the intelligence is giving him a plan no? like you said that is prasadam yeah yeah, is. No. yeah yeah so so the point is that how to do okay that is decided by the intelligence hmm. okay what to do is proposed by the mind hmm. that is what is there so that means when the mind when, sorry when the intelligence is already in the mode of passion and ignorance then it wants to abide by what the mind says actually yeah but for that mind has to first convince like like um, see let us take devotees no let us take devotees devotees are not in mode of ignorance okay or not not there in mode of passion okay but they do things which are not appropriate hmm. they do things which they are not supposed to do okay so what is happening there is that the mind which is affected by lust okay is convincing their intelligence because their intelligence is clearly telling them that this is not something which you are supposed to do hmm. okay so the convincing part is done by the mind how does it diet it it does it by actually developing some feelings okay hmm. the mind first thinks that is the thinking process the second is the feeling process hmm. okay the mind develops some feelings for it for that particular activity the mind develops some feelings so that the process of developing the feelings is also the process of convincing the intelligence to do it hmm. okay then in the feeling stage the the intelligence is being convinced to actually do something which you are not supposed to do when the intelligence is convinced then you already come to the willing stage hmm. then intelligence gives you a plan okay that how you do it intelligence gives you a plan that you do it like this this will be the path of least damage or this will be the path of best explanation 
whatever it is so so the feeling is the seduction part actually yes 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 so, always the feeling is the seduction part so so in that way if you have to cut that 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 seduction part you yes, yes. have to not hear that feeling yes okay. yes you should not get to feeling stage the moment you get to feeling stage the danger is going to willing stage so mind will propose the feeling but the intelligence has to sharply see yes, the yes. feeling coming from the mind yes yeah, that, that is why kapila shiksha is very important hmm. see what kapila shiksha does is that kapila shiksha actually separates the working of the mind and the intelligence from each other okay so you normally a, a common person does not know how to separate the working of the mind from the working of the intelligence it's all intermixed the mind and intelligence working is intermixed they think mind is intelligence intelligence is mind and things like that but what kapila dev does is that he actually compartmentalizes the working of the mind from the working of the intelligence okay so how does it work so you should know what is the working of the mind mind is thinking feeling willing okay so what is the function of intelligence intelligence is doubt misapprehension correct apprehension resolution and sleep okay so the mind has made a proposal okay so what is the intelligence job the intelligence job is to create a doubt whether this proposal is doable or not doable okay then the mind tries to develop some feelings he goes to a feeling stage when the intelligence creates a doubt the mind tries to go to the feeling stage in this stage from misapprehension to correct apprehension if the if the intelligence moves then the intelligence will cut the mind from the feeling stage okay but if the intelligence simply remains in misapprehension and the mind has moved on to the feeling stage then the correct apprehension will simply become the way of fulfilling the mind's desire and till the time mind's desire is fulfilled you cannot sleep you will become sleepless and please thank you what you shared just now in that misapprehension and correct apprehension so misapprehension is it the wrong script and uh... yeah misapprehension means that uh, intelligence is not clear whether it should be done or it should not be done okay okay that is that, that is, is doubt now is it doubt that is But doubt doubt is that whether it is appropriate or not okay at the stage of misapprehension analysis is happening that uh, what will happen whether this is this is right or that is right whether this will happen or that is happen that analysis is happening but when it reaches to the stage of correct apprehension the analysis should be based on scripture okay then whatever is given in the scripture should be the correct apprehension means when we when we come to the right understanding and we uh, fix ourselves is that not the fourth one project resolution yeah that's a resolution that's a resolution that's a resolution and when we miss when we when, connect when to the misapprehension to the, but but when the misapprehension itself is not corrected uh, okay then mind has taken over mind okay is. then the resolution is to simply fulfill the mind's desire yeah. until the mind's desire is is fulfilled you cannot sleep okay there is a very uh, famous conversation between uh, dhritarashtra and vidura in mahabharat dhritarashtra is not getting sleep so he is asking vidura that uh, why i am not able to sleep so then vidura actually explains to dhritarashtra that who are the people who will not be able to sleep so basically the gist of the conversation is that one who is carried away by lust cannot sleep that is the gist of the conversation so if we clearly distinguish the activities of mind from intelligence and if you are able to stop the mind at the thinking stage then we are much better off and that is called tolerance vishayet adhiraha uh, that that you are able to cut off the mind at the thinking stage but if you allow the mind to go to the feeling stage then uh, then you are into trouble <coughs> then you are into trouble because the mind will simply overpower the intelligence and it will 
try to make the intelligence the servant of uh, the mind's desire. And that's what happens that uh, unwillingly we go through this process without knowing how mind is cheating us. Unwillingly we go through this. If we, impulsively we go through this process that we don't know that how mind is cheating us, how intelligence is becoming subservient to mind, what is the function of intelligence, how to utilize intelligence uh, in a way which effectively actually cuts down the mind at the thinking stage. We don't know these things. Because we ourselves are not in control. A materialistic person is not in control. He is thinking he is the mind. So he is not in control of, he doesn't observe the mind and the intelligence as a third party. Kapila Siksha basically gives us that facility to observe the working of the mind and the intelligence as a third party. But your own mind is there, your own intelligence is there, and you are separate. You are, you are away from that mind and intelligence. So you simply see what is happening with your mind and what is happening with your intelligence. So when mind proposes a thought, then you simply follow the train of the thought as a third party and you see what is happening between mind and intelligence. It will be very, very clear to you. Or if you do a postmortem of a thought which has taken you to action, it will be very clear to you how the mind went from thinking to feeling stage <coughs> from feeling to willing stage and how the interlude of the intelligence with its five functions happened in different stages and how finally the, the, the work was achieved. You'll be able to very, very clearly see. You'll be able to clearly see it like a movie which is running in front of you. So then you will know that, okay, I know how to utilize intelligence to, to, to kill the mind at the thinking stage. And then you can also know how to actually direct the mind to think what you want. That's the second stage. The first stage is to actually kill the inappropriate thoughts the mind is bringing up due to its previous vasana. That's, that's the first stage. That uh, uh, mind is on its own randomly bringing up thoughts due to its previous vasana. And then you keep um, um, killing those thoughts which are not appropriate. But the second stage is that with intelligence, you direct the mind to think of certain thing. That this is the thought you should bring about. And then you should become willing to do that. And you should do that. You, you should develop feelings for that. And you should be willing to do that, which is the appropriate path, which the intelligence should direct the mind. That's what... Um, uh, Prabhupada is talking about Ambarish Maharaj, Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayor. That uh, he directed his mind to go to the lotus feet of the Lord and develop attraction and feelings for sensory activities which are actually favorable for Krishna consciousness. Because the mind is the seat of the senses. So the senses are simply directed by the mind. Manashashtani Indriyani, Prakritistani Karshati, we know all these things. So by using intelligence to direct the mind to be at Krishna's lotus feet, then he further manifested the desires of the mind in such a way that all sensory activities became involved in simply Krishna consciousness. So that's the formula. That's what uh, ideally we are supposed to do. Hare Krishna. Uh, like Roji, you said that mind is thinking, feeling, and willing. Yeah. And the intelligence will give uh, the logic. Means basically, uh, means what I heard is like the function of determination, uh, intelligence is discrimination and determination also. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like now, regarding the example which you gave of Gulab Jamun, I'll take specific case only. So, like, uh, the intelligence that you have diabetes, so you should not take this sweet. Then mind will say that it is prasadam. So this mind is saying it is prasadam is a logical argument. Correct. So can mind also argue with the intelligence? Yeah, yeah. Mind can argue with the intelligence because in order to, to argue with the intelligence, mind needs to go to the feeling stage. Okay. Hmm. Mind goes to the feeling stage by processing the sense object. 
Okay. It processes the sense object and then it goes to the feeling stage. So in order to process the sense object, it uses the previous uh, experiences hmm. uh, and it uses previous information which is stored in that. So therefore, it it um, that's how it goes to the to the uh, feeling uh, stage. Uh -huh. So means like just I wanted to from this what we can conclude it may not be true is like the mind will also have a some partial intelligence of functioning like that processing unit or and also like there will be two intelligences one will be intelligence directed by shastra or what is right and another is intelligence which is used by mind to get its desire fulfilled but there are two there are definitely two intelligences huh. one is material intelligence mm -hmm. okay, here also here prabhu also explain this purport no mm -hmm. intelligence which is material intelligence intelligence which is spiritual intelligence mm -hmm. okay Be basically intelligence which is directed by scripture and mm -hmm. intelligence which is directed by sense gratification mm -hmm. uh, there are two aspects of direction which intelligence gets okay so one is sense gratification the other is scripture mm -hmm. okay so if mind is able to captivate that intelligence which is directed by sense gratification then mind simply takes away that that intelligence and then does what it wants that's what is happening now between puranjana and the huh. woman okay but if the mind is if the intelligence interferes with its own understanding of scripture hmm. and stops the mind hmm. then you become properly situated hmm. so means uh, there will be two intelligences one intelligence like good and bad or uh, there is one intelligence hmm. Which is either directed by sense gratification or by scripture. Scriptures. So, okay. so sometimes we say that when it is when it is directed by uh, by sense gratification, we call it as materialistic intelligence. So it looks like it is functioning like two intelligences, but it is only one intelligence. Hmm. But it functions like two, two. because sometimes it's directed by sense gratification, hmm. sometimes it's directed by scriptures. So in this case, can we put one more label? Like just wanted to ask this. Like if I explain to a person who is not a devotee, so in that we can say that a good activity intelligence and bad activity intelligence, and miss good activity means which is good for us. Obviously, it will be supported by scripture only. But we can just say that uh, intelligence which is not uh, good or basically mortal in this. See, basically, good and bad is is very. Uh, sometimes you know what happens is that when you try to explain things in terms of good and bad. So what is good? What is bad? How will you define it? I, then it immediately good. that question comes. No, hmm. the question comes. Then how to define what is good and what is bad? For me, going uh, for a spin with a lady and then having beer is good. Hmm. For you, it may be bad. Uh, so good means obviously scripture only. So be that is so that is why. Huh. Ultimately, you have to come to this explanation. Huh. Intelligence so, which is directed by scripture, hmm. intelligence which is directed by sense gratification. Huh. So for outside also, we can say the same thing. Also. Yeah, you have to say. See, the moment you say good, bad, and all, it becomes very difficult to discern what Dif is good and what is bad because, especially in Kaliyuga, hmm. what is the nature of Kaliyuga? In Kaliyuga, what is allowed in scripture has become bad, hmm. okay, and what is not allowed in scripture has become good. <laughs> this is the very nature of Kaliyuga. Okay, that Kaliyuga is like that. So the moment you say good bad, then you are throwing up everything for interpretation. Ah, means it will go in different direction only. Yeah, it will. You throw up everything for interpretation. Hmm. Okay. So if you say intelligence is directed by scripture and intelligence which is not directed by by intelligence is directed by sense gratification hmm. or desire to enjoy. Okay, sense gratification is an iskon uh, terminology. Uh, it's a terminology. Uh, people they get floored by the terminology. Hmm. If you say intelligence which is directed by scripture. Or intelligence which is directed by the desire to enjoy, uh -huh. then it becomes very clear. Uh -huh. So that words I should use. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Because if you say good bad, it's like same like psychophysical nature. No, it is convenient, but <laughs> it does not come with its own restrictions. Hmm. That's the problem. That hmm. modern terminology, it doesn't come with its own restrictions. Hmm. Then it is open to interpretation. Then you'll instead of just conveying a point which is simple and straightforward. You will end up arguing about what is good and what is bad. Hmm. You understand? No, it will huh. go in a completely different direction. Huh. Means we will not be able to make our point only. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. that's what will happen. And Pooji, one more thing: in the uh, intelligence directed by the scriptures, we can also add the intelligence which is given by, like Paramatma or something. It will be in the same category only. Like yeah, but uh, you know, um, with some inspiration we get for doing some seva. But, so yeah, it, it depends on whom you are talking to. Like, if you are talking to someone who doesn't even know what is Paramatma, mm -hmm. and how he cannot differentiate between the direction of Paramatma 
the the activities of mind and the discrimination of intelligence which i find in devotees also the same thing hmm. like they cannot discriminate between what is the direction of paramatma and what their intelligence is saying and what is their mind is saying so hmm. if devotees cannot discriminate it what to speak of non devotees if you tell them direction of paramatma then they will say paramatma is telling me to run behind this lady so ah. what will you say then then if for a devotee i am saying only for devotee i am saying yeah. in devotee case of devotees fine. only for devotees fine Uh-huh. but they should also be able to discriminate between the direction of paramatma and mm. mind's direction and the intelligence demands like that they should be able to clearly discriminate between these things mm. because because direction of paramatma is always based on scripture uh-huh. so it will be same only means basically it so will be it is better to use scripture direction than direction of paramatma ha uh-huh. because direction of paramatma means still there is some little bit of debate is there uh-huh. that they may say okay like i just i'm selling for example one may say I want to marry this lady who is already married because my Paramatma is telling me to go and rescue her from uh, her condition. She is a abla nari, and I am the prince on the horse. I am going takadak 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 to rescue her. Hmm. So it is all very crazy. Hmm. So if you say that your your intelligence should be directed by scripture, scripture says that all women should be seen as mother. That's hmm. it. Finish. No more abla nari. and uh, prince on the rescue business hmm. so means intelligent directed by guru sadhu shastra or basically that hmm. in line keep it simple and plain yes boy thank you alex okay i think we should take a break tell ready 1215 take 15 minutes break please do your gayatri take some rest and come back hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare so um so then this lady she has accepted uh, puranjana's proposal that she wants to become uh, his wife and then in turn she is glorifying puranjana okay this is the way of sex life what is the way of sex life that the man glorifies the woman saying that oh you are so beautiful you are so nice you are so great and then the woman glorifies the man uh, saying that oh you are very qualified you are very handsome you are uh, you are fully capable of giving all sorts of protection so this way the man speaking nice words to the woman and the woman speaking nice words to the man they simply fall into a life of illusion uh, so that's what um, Uh, material life is all about uh, they they glorify each other and then they they fall into this life of illusion uh, by which they think that uh, they are enjoying life okay so please read yes please read when a husband's woman is attacked by an aggressive man she takes his action to be mercy a young woman who has no husband is called anath meaning no one who is not protected as soon as a woman attains the age of puberty she immediately becomes very much agitated by sexual desire it is therefore the duty of the father to get his daughter married before she attains puberty otherwise she will be very much mortified by not having a husband it is a psychological fact that when a woman at the age of puberty meets a man and the man satisfies her sexually she will love that man for the rest of her life regardless who he is the so called love within this material world is nothing but sexual satisfaction so prabhat makes some points which again can be considered as uh, as uh, a bit of con- controversial points or something like that but uh, if we carefully observe what is happening in the modern world um you will not uh, be surprised with uh, such observations which prabhat makes uh because prabha is saying here that uh, it is duty of a father to get his daughter married before she attains puberty of course it is illegal now uh so but it is even though it is illegal it is made illegal by kaliyuga government but it is a fact so it is made illegal 
is our misfortune, but it is a fact that cannot be denied. How it cannot be denied? It cannot be denied by observing the fact that one of the biggest problems the Western world is facing today, which is also coming to India now, is teenage pregnancy. One of the biggest challenges they are facing today, the Western world is facing today, is teenage pregnancy. Because of unrestricted mixing between boys and girls who are going to school, uh, many teenage girls are becoming pregnant. And either they are going for destroying the pregnancy or they are going for having the child. In both cases, it is a problem. In both cases, it is a problem. So teenage pregnancy is becoming a big challenge because naturally uh, when a woman is young and when she attains of age, uh, she is naturally ready for procreation. And then uh, when a man uh, tries to attract her, then she becomes attracted because uh, that is what the the physical nature of uh, both man and woman is that she becomes attracted and then it causes so much problem. But in Kali Yuga, of course, we don't want child marriage, but we are not worried about child illicit sex. That's why I said in Kali Yuga, what is sinful becomes legal and what is correct, it becomes illegal. So people don't worry so much about child illicit sex. They don't worry about it. Okay, they say, okay, in this age, these things can happen. Uh, now in modern cities in India, it's also getting accepted that uh, sex before marriage is not such a big problem. Now, what is the Kali Yuga's concern? Kali Yuga's concern is only consent. That is the only concern of Kali Yuga. Uh, that sex should be had with consent. Whether it is uh, uh, um, underage or overage or any age, doesn't matter. That two individuals should consent with each other to have sex. That's it. So there is so much of glorification right now given to consent. Even both in West, in India also. Uh, that there are many advertisements uh, coming, no is no, no is not yes, something like that. So many advertisements are coming, uh, which are focusing on consent. They are not focusing on whether a man and woman are qualified to have union or not. So, therefore, uh, when Prabhupada is making a statement which is based on scripture uh, that uh, uh, women should be married early. It is not wrong. Uh, it is not wrong. It may, it may look politically inappropriate to make this statement, but it is not a wrong statement. The statement is correct because the effect of not doing this is illicit sex among children. And that's what we are seeing now in terms of... Uh, uh, dating, in terms of partying, in terms of uh, um, so many different things, which is uh, every day increasing uh, in, uh, in Kali Yuga. And also, there is a big effect which internet plays in this, which is the availability of pornographic material and uh, easy access to pornographic material. It has become like an industry. Pornography is one of the biggest industries now. And previously, what was considered abominable, that if someone uh, is in some pornography, it is considered abominable. Now that also has changed. Now they are saying pornography star. Like uh, there is movie star. Same way they are saying their pornography stars are there. Of course, there is a very thin difference between a modern... Uh, mainstream movie and pornography. That is also a very thin, thin difference is there. It's not like so much difference is there between a mainstream movie and pornography. Mainstream movie also resembles pornography only. Uh, but availability of these things has degraded the society to more or less animal platform. But still, 
when someone makes statement like this, which is that women are to be married early, men are to be married early, and immediately say, oh, this is against uh, human uh, freedom or human nature or something like this. So um, there is a Vedic um, injunction that acharyas won't define, defend their statements. There's a Vedic injunction. Acharyas won't defend their statements. The burden of defending the statement of the Acharya lies with the followers. So we should become ready to defend such statements uh, and present logically such statements. And we should not shy away from these statements. We should not think that, oh, oh, Prabhupada is making this statement. Let us just not talk about it. Uh, let us just uh, close it. Uh, let's not have any discussion about it. Oh, we should boldly have discussion. And if someone has some opposing uh, ideas about this, we should hear those ideas. Okay, what is your opposition to this? Let us let them speak. What is your opposition to this? What is your problem? Okay. Law has prohibited, but the validity of the statement is there. We are not saying that law should be violated. If you want to follow law, it's okay. You follow law. We are not, we are not asking anybody to violate the law of the land. Uh, but at the same time, if someone says that the statement of the Acharya is invalid, then we should stand up and fight for the validity of that statement. So these are important things. There are some statements like this that Prabhupada has made. Um, especially in this section, there are three statements and all three statements are about the nature of women. And every statement requires some explanation. And we should uh, present it properly. We should not shy away from these things. Which one? Can you speak with Mike? I didn't understand. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So Prabhuji, this, uh, no, this statement, because there's many places Tattva is described and the verses are quoted for stating that, right? And some of these statements, like previous statement about rape or this statement is not exactly a scriptural statement. And sometimes it is also depend on the context of that situation. What is the context? Because we don't have, now, one context, maybe they're feeling very much mortified because that age, everybody got married before puberty and somebody is not married by puberty, seeing that everybody is married that maybe that person may feel mortified. Means we don't know exactly that is a no, what no, no, this statement. You're, you're talking about the basis of the statement, no? Hmm. I'm just telling the how much like scriptural statements are always so but the but the basis of this statement is also scriptural. Like Prabhupada is saying that it's a duty of a father to get married before she attains puberty. Otherwise, she'll be very much mortified for by not having a husband. Mm -hmm. This is not some uh, psychological statement. This is, this is a statement from scripture. It is from Manusmriti. This statement is coming from Manusmriti. In Manusmriti, it is stated the duty of the father. Prabhupada is talking about duty of a father. It's not like uh, it's nice if a father does this. He's talking about duty. And where does duty come from? Where does duty come from? I'll give you one uh, question. Like, no, no, I, you please answer my question. Where does duty come the from? Duties come from the scriptures. Uh, the duties are enjoined in the scriptures. Yeah, duties are enjoined in the scriptures. So duty is coming from the scripture. So it's not, yeah. it's not a statement which is, um, which is coming from a social practice at that time. Like, so that's what you are saying basically. Like, I'll uh, like yeah. the Janma Mrityu Jaravadi. You know, everybody has this suffering, and nobody can say deny that it's not there, right? But if survey is conducted, let's say some people 
say that they are not feeling any mortified because they don't have husband before puberty. So how do we defend this? Because that is their personal experience that they don't not feeling any mortification. That kind of immediate feeling is there. And a huge number of people, if they're saying in a survey, then how do we defend such scriptural statement? Because practical experience of the people may not be matching to the statements written there. Yeah, true. That sometimes it may happen like that because if people are trained in a certain way, then they can think in a certain way. Okay. Mm -hmm. If education is given in a certain way, like now education is given to women uh, that you are equal to man. Okay. You can do everything a man wants to do. Like all women believe this. Let us say you take a survey of all the women. All women believe this. Okay. And they are all saying that we believe that we are equal to men. We can do everything man can do. Hmm. Okay. Now you can say now, now what to do? Prabhupada is saying that uh, uh, women have different duties, men have different duties. Like Prabhupada says, like a statement in later in, in another chapter, it is advantageous sometimes to have the body of a man than to have a body of a woman. So that's a statement which Prabhupada makes in, in, the, in one of the ch chapters which comes later in the same section. Okay. Now you may say, no, we are having the same advantage as man and woman, same body, same advantage. We are having as man and woman. Okay. And you take a survey and everybody may say the same thing. Okay. But I can give you an example from modern only. Okay. From the modern thing only. Like few days back, maybe 10 days back, one of the women tennis player, she lost a tournament. Hmm. I can fish out that, uh, that news item. Okay. She lost a tournament. It is one of an important tournament. I think French Open, I think so. She lost a tournament. If you don't know French Open, it's okay. No problem. Uh, it's not a crime if you don't know French Open. Okay. Uh, it's an it's a important um, tennis tournament. Okay? And she came to the final and then she lost it. Why she lost it? She lost it because she had menstrual cramps. And she said, I'm not saying, she herself said it. So openly she said, told in the interview. And you know what she said in the interview after she lost the match? She said, I wish I had the body of a man. Now, what will you do to her? You'll tell her, go jump in Ganga. She is embodiment of feminism. She is a modern woman. She has trained herself in, in a sports and she has gone to a final in a very important tournament. And she has lost the tournament playing against another woman simply because of the nature of woman's body. And now she herself is saying that I wish I had a body of a man. Now you put 10,000 surveys in front of that statement. What is the value of the 10,000 survey in front of that statement which has come from a so-called woman who is so modern? It should be. <laughs> you understand? Hmm. So just because majority says something. This, this is more of an experience, bro. Because this is experience. This is also experience, no. This is also that lady's experience only, no? The majority should feel same experience then. If it is, we are judging by experience. No, no. That is the point. This whole idea of majority should feel the same thing, okay, is always not correct, okay? In Kali Yuga, majority is guided by ignorance. So majority will always feel that something is wrong. What is wrong is right. Like, for example, now Kaliga majority feels that a man and man can get married. Right? So then is it correct that man and man can get married? We can say scriptures, like we can say scriptures say women should get married before puberty. But I'm, I'm just this statement. Uh, now, like we assign certain value to you know, scripture based on slokas. But now it is written there that she'll feel very much mortified every woman. If somebody has no, that, if having not that kind of experience, then how we, you know, convince that person, no, you should feel mortified. No, it is the same thing, like, you know, like, uh, it's a very simple thing, the same thing, like, there are many people who are not Krishna conscious, okay, 
who think that I am happy. Right? When I was not Krishna conscious, I was thinking I am happy. What is the problem? Why I should be Krishna conscious? But unless proper knowledge is given to them, then we will understand, oh, what we are thinking as happiness is not happiness. Okay? In modern world, what unscrupulous men have done, unscrupulous men have taught the woman that you should be equal to man. But what is the basis of teaching that? The basis of teaching that is that you should take the woman from the protection which she is naturally in and you should put her on the road unprotected and then you should freely enjoy her and make her feel that she is enjoying. Okay. This is the whole idea. This is exactly the idea of feminism. The idea of feminism is to make women available for man very easily. Okay. And then make the same woman feel that she is enjoying. Why only man should enjoy multiple women? Why can't woman enjoy multiple men? You are equal to man. No, you enjoy multiple men. So woman also is telling, yes, 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 I am equal to man. I can enjoy multiple men. But ultimately, she has become available for many men. And she is being taught systematically that this is what is correct. And majority opinion is going towards that. Like, so if you go by only survey and majority opinion, like, like, you, you cannot even preach Krishna consciousness. About happiness, which is very difficult to believe materialistic people feel as happy as the devotees because they have this philosophy. Ah, that is because you know, you have experienced it. But there are some people who think that the devotees are fools. And they strongly believe it. And they are the majority. How many people are no, Krishna conscious? They are suffering now because of their material desires. Ah, that is your suffering. thinking, no. Like Prabhupada is saying that the it's, woman feels mortified without having husband. If scriptures say you suffer without Krishna conscious. It is to be practically seen in the world they are suffering. Mm -hmm. That is, you are seeing it because you have eyes to see it. Okay. But they are not seeing it. They are thinking that we are enjoying. You are telling that they are suffering. Okay. How many people are Krishna conscious in this world? Very few. How many? One million probably. There are 90,000 initiated devotees in ISKCON. Nine zero. The 90,000 initiated devotees in ISKCON as per the latest GBC uh, statistics. Okay. Take 10,000 more, 10,000 less. Okay. One lakh initiated devotees. Take 50 times that as those who are favorable to ISKCON. Oh, it's not 51 lakhs. Mm. Okay. What is the population of the world? 700 crore. crore. A 700 crore wala minus 51 lakh sochta hai, 51 lakh hai. Okay. So majority opinion is already against you. Okay. So majority opinion is already against you. You belong to that minority which sees things as per scripture. Papa says the woman is mortified by not having a husband. Okay. As a grahastha, we are dealing with boys and girls. I see it as a fact. Okay. But I am also saying, if you go and ask the girl, are you mortified by not having a husband? She is saying, no, I am not mortified. I don't want to get married. But I can see that she is suffering. But just as this 7 billion minus 51 lakhs is not realizing that they are suffering, this girl is also re not realizing that she is mortified. A woman is supposed to serve one man and satisfy that man. Okay? That is how she is designed. But she is put in front of 100 men and she is trying to satisfy all of them in workplace. How much suffering she goes through that a person with eyes can see. But she herself has been taught, no, you are doing very well. You are fighting in the man's world. You are breaking the glass ceiling. 
and then she is also telling yes 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 i am doing very well i am breaking the glass ceiling i am i am competing in the man's world अरे वो तुम्हारा काम ही नहीं है यू हैव योर ओन ग्लोरी वेट यू नीड मैं ग्लोरी यू डोंट नीड सो द पर्सन हु इज एक्चुअली टेलिंग अ वुमेन यू आर डिफिशियंट बिकॉज यू आर नॉट डूइंग वॉट मैन इज डूइंग इज एक्चुअली इंसल्टिंग हर दैट्स वॉट स्क्रिप्चर टेल्स मी ओके बट मेजोरिटी ऑफ वुमेन डोंट एग्री विद दिस व्यू पॉइंट they think it is a challenge they don't understand that it is an insult yes. woman is glorious by her own nature she doesn't have to become man to become glorious this book uh... so that is why i am saying always there is difference between popular opinion and authoritative statement actually i think uh, like the book is very nice probably the tapanvishra approach wife presentation how i made my life, life successful it defeats all feminism with statements and she has use actually lot of research also proving this kind of statement so to support this kind of statements also uh, we need to actually no more deeper because it can be proved also as you are telling prabhu if we if we properly do that then it can be proved also because it is experiential thing actually probably superficially they are telling something but if we all ask them to reflect it will come out yeah that's what exactly i'm saying this woman told no this this tennis player she said spontaneously she made a statement i wish i had the body of a man she made the statement spontaneously nobody preached to her that woman's body is different from man's body and proper has told sometimes it is advantages to have man's body she may not even know existence of proper simply out of certain experience she spontaneously made that statement so if you put man and woman in their natural condition then you will see that what is said in the scripture is correct as simple as that so what you are saying is correct that women should take devotee women who actually have faith in proper statements they should actually take such statements and they should write elaborate uh, material about how it is correct like uh, um sabar mishra prabhu's uh, wife's yeah. book yeah she has written nice book yeah. is so nice. that's what we should do we cannot go by popular opinion to understand what is right and what is wrong if we go by that we cannot practice krishna consciousness as simple as that because 700 crore minus 51 lakhs is saying that life is better without krishna consciousness i i believe prabhu ji for that we should able to show that that way also because it's not something we are speaking from the books and they have real experience we can prove that yeah we need we to work upon that how do we do that yeah yeah of course the way to do that is to have early marriages in iskon mm -hmm. and then show people that how early marriage is working very nicely i got my son married when he was 22 because anyway he was interested in marriage and my daughter in law was 18 years old when they both got engaged my daughter in law was 16 years old and my son was 19 years old very <laughs> so now they are happy they are married they got married during covid time they got married and they okay they are happy they are uh, they are they are living their life they both are krishna conscious both of them are initiated my son is second initiated they have their livelihood he is a farmer he is doing farming in mayapur is dependent on land and living his grahastha life happily without any tension of uh, running to office at 6 uh, uh, o'clock in the morning working like a donkey for uh, 12 hours and then coming home at night at 9 o'clock living village life happily they're doing yes singing kirtan having prashad earning simple livelihood is possible is possible if you have faith in scripture it is possible i was living in dubai the most materialistic place in this world everybody goes there to make money only okay? nobody goes to dubai to make to become saintly person okay 
nobody goes there to become saintly person everybody goes there with the stated aim that i want to make money it's a money centered society the center of the society is clearly money and everybody shamelessly accepts it you can't see old people in dubai because the moment you become old they will throw you away from there so you will only see young people there young people who are energetic who are running here and there who are very busy making money okay my son was born there he grew up there but from the time he is born he is devotee only okay because we came to krishna consciousness by the time he was born so from uh, from his young age from four or five months six months he is going for mangalarti he is doing everything he has all krishna conscious impression his friends are also krishna conscious devotees only when he was about 7 8 years old i asked him question what is the aim of your life i thought he will say that he will go to goloka something like that no because he was attending all class if you ask him question what is krishna he will say krishna is supreme personality of godhead who are you i am atma i am not this body everything he will say okay because he was attending all this children class and he is taught by his teachers nicely and everything so i casually asked him one day what is the goal of your life i was thinking that he will say i will go to krishna something like that i thought he will say he asked me a question back how many houses did you build i told him i built two houses he said i will build four houses that is the goal of my life i told him you stupid guy i built two house i myself am not living there i am working like a bloody donkey here you want to become double donkey what is this ha huh? then i realized that uh, i need to do something drastic with him otherwise is not going to work because i have shown him that making money is the purpose of life that's what i have shown him i came to dubai i am sitting working i am making money and what i have shown him making money and building house is the purpose of life is not his fault very frankly it is my fault this is what i have shown him this is what i have taught him okay you become krishna conscious you chant 16 round you take initiation this all good to do is all good to do but what is purpose of life make money and build houses this is purpose of life so i told my son i will show you another world i will show you another world in that world there is no meaning for money that world doesn't work around money there is no meaning for money in that world it's a completely different experience i will show you that world then you make a choice it's up to you tum gada banna hai tumko gada bana dega tum bhakt banna hai tum bhakt bana dega you make a choice but at least you should see like i have shown you this experience you did not ask for it but i have shown you this experience so now you are not asking for it i will show you also another experience okay that fellow asked okay where do you want to take me i said i'll take you to mayapur i'll put you in gurukula is there arabic there no arabic do you have homework there no homework okay i am ready to go that was his consideration is a tiny year old boy what consideration you will have so the two consideration hai no homework no arabic he doesn't like arabic he have always had struggle with arabic so to study arabic was like a big struggle for him arabic arabic language arabic so because in dubai you have to compulsory study arabic because uh, national language no you have to compulsory study you can't avoid arabic you have to study it so no arabic no homework okay he became ready he said i will go to gurukula then we came to mayapur i put him in gurukula after one week they told him to do lepa lepi with cow dung you know what is lepa lepi so they told him you do lepa lepi with cow dung so he came home and he said they asked me to put my hand in cow shit he is not used to it 
but anyway he liked it to his glory he went through everything and then he tolerated and he was he liked it after 6 months i asked him that do you want to stay in gurukul or you want to come out of gurukul he said no no i will stay after 8 months he joined ashram he said house is not good for me i'll go and ashram i'll join ashram he joined ashram of course then he graduated also he graduated he got married the point why i am saying this is that if you simply go by majority opinion you can never become krishna conscious you can never become krishna conscious you should have the guts to accept the statement of shila prabhupada if you have that guts you can be happy now he is happy he is he says that the best thing to happen in his life is that he went to gurukula even though of course there are multiple opinions about gurukula in his corner i am not going to get into all that controversy but according to him you ask him any day will tell you the best thing to happen to me is that i went to gurukula it's natural for boys to be like that to be austere uh, to eat nicely to play and to study to be to do something physical it's natural for boys to be like that boys means they should be like that only uh, now boys are like girls that's why people are getting confused once i was taking class for uh, international school boys and these boys like basketball very much huh? they they think that basketball is very nice i told them that playing with a ball is women's game they were all shocked why are you saying like this i told you saw anywhere in bhagavatam men playing with ball anywhere in bhagavatam can you see men playing with ball but every time there is description of woman what she is doing she playing with ball because playing with ball is women's game it's not man's game it's not man's game but kaliyuga the problem in kaliyuga is like this only they will make man as woman is a problem in kaliyuga then they said what we should play yeah okay what men play okay you ask question like this is good brahmana boys debate that is their past time they take scriptural statements and debate that is how brahmana boys play kshatriya boys play with weapons they don't play with ball they play with weapons they fight with each other they play with weapons vaishya boys play with bulls they tame bulls that's what they do huh this is how you are to be trained as boys not take on ball and put it inside a hole and then think that you are very manly it's all very crazy so why i am saying this is that popular opinion in kaliyuga is crazy okay we should have the guts to defend prabhupada's statements against popular opinion and we should do it logically we should do it nicely and in order to do that first of all we should have faith in that statement yeah if we ourselves don't have faith in the statement then we should need to work on our own faith that that what prabhupada is saying is correct is not some contextual cultural thing this is now common in iskon like you know there is there is a whole group of people who are saying that the statements which prabhupada made should be divided into two categories one category is philosophical statements which are absolute truth the other statements are contextual cultural things which can be abandoned so there's a whole movement in iskon like this the whole uh, discussion happening it's a whole discussion i don't want to get into too much but you can't separate culture from krishna consciousness because philosophy is abstract application of philosophy is culture okay so if you try to separate the statements about culture from the statements about philosophy then you will end up with sahajyas what will happen you will end up with sahajyas that's what will happen 
and that has happened in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. It is not new. It has happened in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. And then a host of Acharyas came to establish the philosophy along with culture. They did both. They established philosophy, they've established culture also. They established both. And whatever adjustment is to be made, Prabhupada made it. So we should be happy. Okay. Yeah. So let's move to the next purpose. These are some statements which which causes some discussion, but it's good to have these discussions. Otherwise, uh, uh, we will just pass through these statements and then uh, lose the opportunity to meditate upon them. Okay, please read. A living being has different activities in different stages of life. One stage is called Jagrita or the life of awakening and another is called Sopna or the life of dream. Another stage is called Susupti or life in an unconscious state and still another stage occurs after that. In the previous verse, the life of awakening was described. That is the man and the woman were married and enjoyed life for 100 years. In this verse, life in the dream state is described. For the activity Puranjana accomplished during the day, we are also reflected at night in the dream state. Generally, a man's tendency is to enjoy wom many women. And even at the very end of life, the sex impulse is so strong that even though one is very old, he still wants to enjoy the company of young girls. So we should be very careful that uh, we should not simply think that age is an insurance against sex impulse. Uh, we should not think like that. Young men should be careful. Old women need not be careful. Old men need not be careful. We have now become old. Our body has become frail. Uh, our senses have become um, not so strong. So uh, only young men should worry about um, uh, not having uh, proper, uh, not you know, in how to associate with women properly. Old men need not worry about it. One should not think like that. Age is not an insurance against sex impulse. Whether one is young or whether one is old, one should be careful. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So then there is description of uh, the nine gates, um, which is... Um, there are five gates which are facing the east, um, then one gate north, one gate south, and the other two gates in the west. So the two eyes, two nostrils, and one mouth, these are considered as the five gates which are facing the east. So two ears are the gates which are on the north and south, and then the rectum and the genitals are the gates which are uh, facing the west. So. Each of these gates uh, have been, uh, through each of these gates, Puranjana is explained to go through a particular destination. Mm -hmm. And in order to go to the destination and enjoy, every time he takes a friend. So this is the explanation of the concept of Adhyatmika, Adibhautika and Adidaivik concept. Mm -hmm. That uh, the senses are Adibhuta. And they are under the control of the demigods who are the Adidaiva. Uh, and the conditioned soul who thinks that I am the enjoyer is the Adhyatma. Uh, so the conditioned soul who is the Adhyatma, who thinks that I am the enjoyer, simply identifies Adibhauta, Adibhut, Adibhauta as the senses, Adibhauta, which is the senses, as the medium through which he can enjoy. And then with the help of the demigods which control the senses, he actually goes to sense objects and then he enjoys them. So that description uh, is given that how he went through the different gates and then how he enjoyed uh, in different ways. Uh, this is explained. 
So, okay. So this is uh, the the first explanation of the two gates. Okay. These are the two eyes. Okay, please read. The two names Khadiyota and Avir Mukti mean glow worm and torchlight. This indicates that of the two eyes, the left eye is less powerful in its ability to see. Although both eyes are constructed in one place, one is stronger than the other in the power to see. He cannot see unless accompanied by a friend whose name is Duman. This friend is the sun. Within this body, everyone is a king because he uses his different gates according to his own will. Although he is very much proud of his power to see or hear, he is nonetheless dependent on the assistance of nature. Assistance of nature means the nature provides him the senses and also nature provides the demigods which control the senses. So therefore, uh, even though he is thinking that he is independent in utilizing the senses, but actually he is not. Uh, unless the sanction of the demigods is there, and ultimately, the sanction of the super soul is there. Uh, he cannot do it. Okay, please read. The two gates named Nalini and Nalini are the two nostrils. Different avadhutas or airs which constitute the breathing process. Town of Saurava or Aroma. Nalini and Nalini are the pipes of the nostrils through which one inhales and exhales, enjoying the aroma of sense pleasure. Yeah, so the... The, the bodily airs are called avadutas because they are freely roaming everywhere within the body. So they are called as avaduta. Okay. Now the fifth gate, which is the mouth. Okay. The mouth is, is a very important entrance because one has two functions to conduct with the mouth. One function is eating and the other is speaking. Or eating is done with, with the friend rasagnya, the tongue, which can taste so many different types of foods. The tongue is also used for speaking and it can speak of either material sense enjoyment or Vedic knowledge. Of course, here material sense enjoyment is stressed. Therefore, the word rasagnya is used. So this gate actually takes him to two destinations. Uh, one destination is called Apana and the other destination is called Bahudana. Uh, one refers to tasting and the other refers to speaking. Uh, so it, this gate takes, to two uh, takes him to two destinations. Okay, so then um, uh, the northern gate and southern gate. Uh, one is called Pitruhu because that is used for the right ear is, uh, okay, please read. The right ear is used for the karma khandiya or fruitive activities. As long as one is attached to the enjoyment of material resources, he hears from the right ear and uses the five senses to elevate himself to the higher planetary systems like Pitraloka. Consequently, the right ear is here described as Pitruhu gate. Yeah, so Karmakanda means giving a lot of importance to forefathers uh, because uh, the material body is uh, attained through forefathers. So by doing the duties of the material body and uh, satisfying the forefathers, uh, then one can uh, get heavenly enjoyment. So therefore, all those uh, information is heard traditionally from the right ear. So it is called Pitruhu. The left ear is called Devahu. The ear on the northern side, however, is used for taking initiation from the spiritual master and for gaining promotion to the spiritual sky. But the left ear, which is known as Devahu, is utilized for hearing about even higher planetary systems such as Mahaloka, Tapaloka, Brahmaloka are yet even higher planets situated in the spiritual universe where one becomes more inclined to be from permanently situated. So these two years, then after that, there are other gates, uh, the um, <clears throat> the genitals and the uh, rectum. So they are generally meant for asuric enjoyment. Lord Chaitanya consequently wanted this Krishna consciousness movement to be preached on the western side of the world so that people addicted to sense gratification might be benefited by his teachings. Yeah, so that is the whole purpose of uh, us understanding the philosophy. 
that uh, somehow we can come out of this asuric mood to enjoy and then uh, become purified so then there is description of the um, working senses especially hands and legs uh, they are considered as blind because they don't have any holes they no have no holes in the hands and no holes in the legs yes please yeah so all these things are simply supposed to be utilized for krishna consciousness all these senses all these senses are meant to be gratified through krishna consciousness okay prabha says that the senses need to be gratified it's not that krishna consciousness is denial of sense gratification the path of jnana and path of yoga is denial of sense gratification pratyahara means withdrawing the senses from sense objects okay but path of krishna consciousness is not about withdrawing the senses from sense objects but uniting the senses with the sense objects in a right manner uh, that's what krishna consciousness is all about it's not that we don't eat tasty food we eat tasty food but we eat when it is offered to krishna it is not that we don't vibrate sweet songs which are very good to hear we vibrate sweet songs which are very good to hear uh, but we vibrate the sweet songs which is not about lust of a man with a woman but they are simply about shri shri radha and krishna uh, so every sense activity every sense uh, we gratify in krishna consciousness it's not that we don't gratify we gratify every sense in krishna consciousness but that gratification is done in such a way that the senses get purified uh, that's the third track so it's not like uh, we don't utilize the senses there are a set of philosophers who don't who advocate not utilizing the senses which is the gyanis and the yogis they actually advocate that we should not utilize the senses the moment you utilize the senses you will get entrapped we don't say like that we say that we utilize the senses in krishna consciousness therefore the senses have become like snake whose poisonous teeth has been removed so that's the third track so the first track is that a man gets a woman but he is not satisfied with the woman even though the man has taken so much pain to entice a woman and then get married to her but he is not satisfied with her also so what he does he takes his friends and goes to various places and then he tries to enjoy away from his wife is very typically seen uh, that uh, in in modern kaliyuga they use this word that i need space they use this word they say that i need space for myself which means what i am fed up with sense gratification with you i want to go and sense have sense gratification with somebody else this is called space i need space for myself uh, they say that uh, oh okay we are husband and wife but still we need space hmm? so that is the first track the man is not satisfied uh, with his family life so he has various type of friends and then he has various type of friends with whom he can have various type of enjoyment he has uh, friends with whom he can have some i have seen that you know um after i came to krishna consciousness i got i lost touch with my college mates initially i was keeping in touch with them for some time uh, professionally also we were keeping in touch then after i came to krishna consciousness i completely lost in touch with my college mates because we just i just simply did not have time to actually uh go and engage with them and uh, get with them and also there was not so much social media at that time then uh, we had a 25 year reunion and they invited me they said uh, please come for reunion i said what you guys will do you will simply drink and uh, eat non veg i have nothing to do about it so i don't want to come they said no 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 you please come we will give you some some time exclusively for you to talk we want to hear about you because you have become crazy so we want to know what happened to you so we want to hear about it 
so i said okay if you are giving me time to talk i will come because this is our business now our business is just to go and talk this is our business so i said okay i'll come so i went second day and then i actually uh, i had a nice discussion with them we had question answer we had good and uh, so some something fruitful which came out of the discussion two three of my classmates became interested in krishna consciousness one got initiated all this is this some use was there for which i went but why i brought this topic was then after that they added me to a whatsapp group my god 24 hours of non stop nonsense of all topics on earth under sun about american politics about uh, because they are all in different different places some of them living in india some of them in america some of them in far east some of them in middle east they are all over the world so the entire world politics get discussed there i was there in that whatsapp group for some time then i thought this is too much for me so i told these guys that uh, uh, i cannot take this and i came out of that whatsapp group i quit that whatsapp group two things happened uh, one is this college whatsapp group the other is school whatsapp group both of them are such a nonsense that i simply came out of it then my friend he told me that there exist five whatsapp groups amongst friends not one i was added to only one group which was considered as a intellectual group okay i was added to that group then there is also another group where they are with families and i asked what happens in that group they said that in that group they exchange mild sex jokes there is a third group they have and in that group is supposed to be a vulgar group only boys are there in that group and then there was another group where they were doing some other sort of discussion so this is what is explained here that the man he is not satisfied with having enjoyment with his wife he actually develops different grades of friendship and that with the different grades of friends he goes and has different type of enjoyment some of them very tamasic some of them very rajasic some of them in mode of goodness so this is the first track the second track is that the modes are very strong and due to the competition between the modes of nature sometimes the senses are attracted towards sattvic activities sometimes the senses are attracted towards rajasic activities sometimes the senses are attracted towards tamasic activities based on which mode becomes prominent a certain sense object and the senses become very active and rest of all the senses become subservient to that active sense that is what is happening with the conditioned soul when he wants to have sex enjoyment then the genitals become very active then the hands the legs the eyes the ears the sense of taste the sense of smell everything is simply assisting the genitals they all become part of the activity of the genitals in this way they all get drawn by that activity so when eating sense becomes prominent then all the senses go towards the eating sense and that eating sense become prominent then we are seeing the food we are smelling the food we are touching the food and then everything is helping the process of tasting the food so this way when one sense activity becomes prominent the other senses either join that sense activity and become subservient or they simply subside themselves so that the prominent sense can do its activity 
and then the living entity thinks that i am enjoying he thinks that i am enjoying <clears throat> okay please read this purport yeah because there are, like these are discussions regarding cultures happening here is one more observation i want to discuss i want to know about your opinion also uh, like we see life of ajamela that he was a cultured person he went drifted away from the culture but in the end he got mercy he could remember the lord and he went to back to godhead recently we also heard shila prabhupad disciple that story some of the disciple the sanyasi and then they they drifted got away from krishna consciousness and uh in the end fag on the life they got shila prabhupad mercy they went back to godhead because these things are right but at the same time those devotees let's say there was a discussion regarding divorce and you mentioned shila prabhupad rights the constitution and somebody is already married divorce person so if there is a too much emphasis on this then there will be so much in guilt that their present krishna consciousness activities will be always like what is this no not accepted and so probably for such people who are having a difficult past or those who are not brought up in indian culture and we have, the more emphasis need to be on helping them to become remain krishna conscious and have a stable life okay so it's a good point uh first of all we should understand that uh, uh, you said something that uh, uh, the people having troubled past okay we should understand that every living entity in this material world is here because they are having a troubled past okay we are not immune to the troubled past in this lifetime we may have a less troubled past but we are as bad as any other living entity who is having more troubled past in this lifetime okay if you are nice people we will be in spiritual world they very they very very simple fact we should accept this what is that nice people are in spiritual world because we are lousy we are in the material world okay so in the material world everyone is lousy so we should have no illusion about these things okay we should not think i am nice he is lousy okay i may be relatively nice in this lifetime but whatever sin anybody has done we have done all those sins we should not have any doubt about these things okay if we have some doubt about these things we will not regret having a body okay if we have some doubt about these things we will not sincerely regret having a body we will think that i am better off than the other guy okay so that's the first thing i wanted to say uh, that we are not better off than the other person we are as bad as the other person that's one point but in the present lifetime we may have some better samskaras working for us than for others anybody can come to krishna consciousness we should not restrict people coming to krishna consciousness dina hina jata chilo hariname uddharilo a very simple point okay that whether you are divorcee whether you are married 10 times you are not married 20 times is all not a problem uh, whether you did illicit sex or whether you did licit sex whatever it is anybody can take up krishna consciousness there is no restriction in a person taking up krishna consciousness anybody is qualified to chant the holy name there is no restriction in anybody chanting the holy name whether you are heterosexual homosexual polysexual that sexual this sexual any sexual you can chant the holy name there is no restriction in doing these things there is no restriction in reading prabhat books there is no restriction in coming up and joining the krishna conscious movement the moment you join the krishna conscious movement and then come to a stage where you are saying i want to become serious i want to accept initiation i want to surrender to a spiritual master same rule should apply for everyone what is that follow four regulatory principles chant 16 rounds that's it just like we don't give concession to anybody that uh, you may say i may say that i am eating meat eight days a week i cannot imagine not eating meat 
my whole existence has been on eating meat so please give me concession because of my very bad samskara i'll just keep eating meat give me initiation will you agree what will you say has to come to proper practice please take your time mm. we will give you enough opportunity we will not stop you from practicing krishna consciousness uh, we will not uh, degrade you or decry you we will be compassionate on you we will give you enough time we will give you enough support but you have to stop eating meat same thing same thing should apply for every practice okay we are meant to be compassionate we are meant to accept everyone we are meant to give krishna consciousness to everyone without discrimination but when it comes to seriously practicing krishna consciousness taking initiation etc we should give them enough support and we should give them time so that they can actually understand what is right and what is wrong it's not about indian culture or not indian culture i have seen many indian women including my wife they don't cover their head i have seen many proper disciples western women very old religiously cover their head you go and ask them why are you covering your head they simply give you answer because prabhupad likes it i have personally asked what is you are so old you are still covering your head they simply tell me prabhupad likes it this is how he wanted us to be this how we will be this how we will be where is the question of indian culture where is the question of western culture is all illusion indian culture western culture they learned culture from prabhupad and then they will give their life to follow what prabhupad said that takes them back to prabhupad we should try to develop that kind of faith so that's what we should instill amongst the members of the international society for krishna consciousness that's what we are meant to do instill that kind of faith so prabhat taught us how to practice krishna consciousness in the process he also taught us how to dress how to behave he wrote in his purports this is right this is wrong we are meant to have faith in that as followers of prabhat we are meant to have faith in that sometimes prabhat may make some statements which are very difficult i is very easy for me to just not highlight the rape statement and then just skip it nobody will bat an eyelid right i just not highlight i'll just skip it why should i take pain to highlight the statement make people read take some explanation from where it has been given read that explanation because we are meant to defend the acharya it is our prime duty as followers of the acharya to defend the acharya according to our, the level of our knowledge we may be able to defend we may not be able to defend is there in chaitanya charitamrita ha huh? that um, tapan mishran gopinath acharya they were not able to defend against the mayavadis and krishna kavidar goswami says they are kanishtha adhikaris because they are not able to defend okay. okay i may be kanishtha i may not be able to defend properly but it is my duty to do it and if i am not defending properly i should train myself to defend properly rather than running away from it yeah so it's not a question of indian culture or not indian culture is not a question of where the emphasis should be is not a question of putting down people is a question of trying to have proper understanding trying to have that compassion and empathy but at the same time trying to educate people that what is right and what is wrong based on what proper said without compromise and that's very important because proper also said what he said our movement will be destroyed from from inside 
and how the destruction from inside will come when we start making compromises the destruction from inside will come so we we should uh, we should be careful we should be compassionate why we will not be compassionate we came to krishna consciousness because of compassion why will not be compassionate we should be but at the same time we should be yeah okay okay this is a long purport we should stop here because it's already 140 yes sir roji uh, that um, we hear that uh, ahankara vimoha atma kartaham ite vannite and here also we are seeing that the jiva uh, thinks that apparently thinks that the jiva is enjoying mm. now for example proji if i eat gulab jamun i feel happy okay so There's what nothing wrong if you like so, gulab jamun if you eat it you can feel happy so now as per this explanation what is what exactly is happening see it depends upon how you are eating gulab jamun okay if you are eating an offered gulab jamun and if you are accepting it as krishna's mercy and if you are feeling happy this is legitimate krishna conscious happiness you are entitled for it nobody can take away that happiness from you okay you are entitled for it and that happiness attaches you to krishna uh, you are thinking i am eating gulab jamun sitting here in nvcc tomorrow a stage will come where i will sit in goloka and eat gulab jamun with krishna so that gulab jamun becomes a cause of your attachment to krishna that's okay you are meant to be happy we are not gyanis neti 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 we are not that type of people we are not rejectors we accept everything in relation with krishna uh, and that happiness we accept happily in relation with krishna but if you eat the same gulab jamun thinking that this gulab jamun is meant for my enjoyment uh, and i am the enjoyer of this gulab jamun nobody else can enjoy this gulab jamun i have the right to enjoy this gulab jamun this gulab jamun has been made for my enjoyment and if you eat the same gulab jamun then that same gulab jamun becomes that happiness becomes the cause of your bondage so a happiness of eating gulab jamun is there in both senses but whether it will liberate you or whether it will cause bondage depends on whether you have identified yourself as an enjoyer or whether you have identified yourself as a servant of krishna who is accepting krishna's mercy that's it very simple yagyartat karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandhana tadartam karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara proji we hear that sense objects are dead no no they are, why should we hear it they are dead gulab jamun is dead no yeah so uh... So if you how, want to have live conscious gulab jamun you have to go to goloka pretty my point is like uh, we hear what exactly makes the jiva feels that i am enjoying the sense object because jiva is so bad that in the material world only engagement with dead matter is considered as enjoyment if you actually see the nature of material world is such a lousy place if you analyze little bit the nature of material world what is considered as enjoyment engagement with dead matter is considered as enjoyment and how do you maintain the body you maintain the body by killing other people you will maintain the body you cannot maintain the body by not killing other entity ahastani sahastanam apadani chatuspadam falguni tatra mahatam jivo jivasya jivanam maintenance of material body is a cruel affair is a cruel affair by nature this material world is merciless is merciless is so self centered enjoyment here is engagement with dead matter maintenance here is killing other person this we are considering as a nice place okay we are considering this a nice place is not a nice place is not a nice place the very nature of material life is miserable without mercy full of wickedness and cruelty 
but if you simply follow cruelty which has been destined for you at least you will not do something sinful isa avasyam idam sarvam yat kinche jagatyam jagat tena tektena bhunjita ma grada kascha swidhanam but a person who meditates on the nature of enjoyment of this material world and he sees how the material body is maintained will never get attached to the material body or he will never get attached to the process of material enjoyment as it is explained in this material world never ever he will get attached that is why puranjana's allegory is so strong because it completely dissolutions the idea of having enjoyment in this material world it lays it thread bare in front of you that what it is and what it is not this is what it is you are considering as enjoyment you stupid fellow you see this this is what it is so therefore people are afraid of this kind of aspects of bhagavatam because it completely disillusions you prabhupada repeatedly says that you have to become pessimistic about material life and the best way to become pessimistic about material life is to read bhagavatam if you read bhagavatam carefully you will never be optimistic about material life and that is good for us you will understand the nature of material body and you understand the misery of the so called material enjoyment which is simply engagement of senses with dead matter dead matter engages with dead matter and that is considered as enjoyment okay we we'll stop here hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे ग्रंथ राशि मन भागवतम की शिला प्रभात की गौर पे मनंदे